Although I usually worked in the lab while the club was open, an industrial remix of Strange Days by the Doors snapped me out of my project. I couldn't hide out down here all night. Time to make sure business was running smoothly upstairs. Bracing myself for the onslaught on my psyche, I took a deep breath before I walked into the main club area. I glanced around the perimeter of the club, scanning the bar area and the dance floor. The usual darkness surrounded people, the sadness, the isolation, which I could see so vividly while others couldn't. Their souls crying out to me, draining me. I tried to ignore their pull as I glanced around. The bartenders looked busy. The bouncers looked alert for any drunken jerks acting out of control. The gargoyle statues stood intact, watching over the club from their perches. Their stone eyes could see more than they let on. I'd never seen these guards in their human form, yet heard they'd shift at the sign of danger. Nothing seemed amiss. Good. I could make my rounds and get out of there and back to the lab. Then, one figure on the dance floor caught my eye. She glowed with the light around her unlike any I'd encountered before. Her bright spirit overwhelmed the darkness that surrounded the others. I watched as she danced, oblivious to those around her. Her light mesmerized me. For the first time I'd been around people other than my family. I wasn't overwhelmed by darkness. I couldn't take my eyes off her. What was it she had? Then she stopped and looked at me. Even though the club was dark, her light revealed her eyes were a brilliant blue. When our eyes met, I saw her more clearly. A sadness buried deep within this bright spirit. Whereas others' pain usually repelled me, her pain filled me with compassion. What was hiding there so deeply within this light? What hurt her? Suddenly I wanted to protect her from any pain. Her light was magnetic. It drew me in. Now that her captivating eyes were staring back at me as well, I became unnerved. I turned away and disappeared down the back stairwell. Safely in my lab, I sat in the leather chair in the corner I dubbed the library and thought, what was she? What would explain the light? I scanned the books in the library, on the bookshelves built into a rounded wall modeled after one I admired in nearby Hammond Castle. I had books and books on the supernatural, so I flipped through them trying to find more information on why I saw what I did and what that meant. I flipped through one book after another, reading by the light from the candelabra, which I found more soothing than artificial light. What would explain what I just saw upstairs with that woman? Finding nothing, I closed the book and stared into the flames. Then I closed my eyes. A vision of her dancing quickly shaped itself in my mind's eye. Getting past the initial shock of her light, I remembered the way she moved, the way she danced unabashed to Cinnamon Girl. I saw her hips sway, her arms unfurl into the air as if conjuring up the elements. Her black hair wave out behind her as she tossed her head back. I visualized her long legs extend up from those chunky black heels up to the tiniest of skirts in her pirate wench costume. Who wouldn't want to peek? My curiosity about her was now piqued by my arousal. I felt consumed with the need to see her again. What was she like? I had to get up there and meet her. I blew out the candles and went upstairs, returning to the dance floor area where I'd last seen her. She wasn't there any longer. I walked the perimeter of the dance floor looking for her. Where was she? She should be easy to see with that light, that glow. Was it gone? Or was it just my mind playing tricks on me? Yes, that would explain it. I'd never seen anything like that before. It couldn't be real. It shouldn't be. Nevertheless, I scanned the people at the bar looking for my little pirate wench. But she was nowhere to be seen. I exhaled a deep sigh of regret. I blew it.